I've been using Copilot in Excel for over a year, so I want to share my honest thoughts on what it's actually like. First, we'll go over what it's great at, secondly, what it's okay or average at, and finally, what it really struggles with. So let's find out if it's a genuine time saver or just another overhyped AI tool. First up, going over some strengths, Copilot works very well with text. As you can see over here, we have a collection of tickets, which are basically complaints by customers, and here's each of their messages. And you can download this file for free in the video description to follow along and test how Copilot works for you. Instead of reading through each one, which can be a bit tedious, what you can do is just head over to Copilot over here on the right hand side, and we can just type something like summarize the messages in column C. So you can see it's been able to summarize into just four main bullets what's actually going on with all of these customer support messages so we can hopefully find a general trend. Other than summarizing plain text, it's also quite good at basic data cleaning. So over here you can see we have a data set. Let's suppose that I want to just merge the first name column and the last name column. So I've typed merge the first name and the last name into a new column called name. So you can see it's suggesting this formula with the ampersand, which is exactly how I would have thought of doing it. Let me just press on insert a column and you can see it's able to add that extra column in here. Also right now the data doesn't really have like a unique ID number for each of these people. So maybe it would be nice to add an extra column. So add new column with unique ID starting at 100 and increasing by one for each row. So let me just insert that column and you can see it's pretty much what I would have thought except that maybe it should have started at 100 instead of at 101. Admittedly, we could have done things like this with ChatGPT, but the difference is that once we get the formula in ChatGPT, we would need to copy it and then paste it inside of Excel, whereas here the workflow is a lot more seamless. And you might be wondering, how about for something like data analysis? Maybe we want to find out the relationship between the age and the salary. Let's see if it can work with that. So analyze the relationship between age and salary. As you can see, it's generated this chart visual and roughly as the age goes up, it looks like the salary goes up with it. The one thing that people don't realize is that this type of tool already existed in Excel. It's actually right next to the Copilot, this analyze data tool. I don't think it's strictly part of Copilot, but it does very similar analysis. So in here, if I type relationship between salary and age, you can see that it actually plots the exact same chart and it actually did that even faster. So that's just something to keep in mind. For more advanced data analysis, Copilot is now integrated with Python in Excel. So you'll notice down here that we get the suggestion, get deeper analysis results using Python. Let's click on that and see what happens. As I scroll down, it says ready to get started. Let me just press on start. You'll notice that it basically creates a separate sheet here and this is where it does the actual analysis. Let me scroll down here to see what's going on. It seems like it's added all of the data and it's asking me to specify the type of analysis I want. Let's say I go for correlation between salary and other variables like age or tenure. If I scroll lower down, you'll see that it's created this correlation matrix down below where it seems like salary and age are very correlated and so are salary and tenure. Basically, one is the highest number possible. For narrow and relatively simple tasks like the ones we've just seen, Copilot works quite well, but when it comes to more complex topics, it's more or less average at that. Let me show you here some examples. Right now, the data set we're working with is slightly different. Under the division, you can see that marketing here has two Gs, whereas sometimes it only has one G, and HR is sometimes called HR human resources in parentheses while other times it's just called HR. Overall, this is a more realistic data set in that data is not always perfect. With that in mind, let's go ahead and ask, show the average age by division. Let's see what it gives us there. As I scroll lower down, you'll notice that it's not able to detect the fact that marketing with two Gs and one G is really just the same thing. It's only a typo there. And HR human resources is the same thing as HR. So as soon as we made things slightly more realistic, in this case by making the data a bit more raw or a bit more unfiltered, then it starts to have some complications. 
The same thing goes if you have some sort of a multi-step process. For instance, right here in cell G2, let's say that I want to create a dropdown with all of the different office locations. For that, I might type something like create a dropdown in cell J2 with all the unique office locations. You'll notice that first it gives us an error. It says I couldn't create it, but then as we follow on, it's able to actually give us some data, but it doesn't actually create it for you. Instead, it just shows you these steps to create that particular feature, which in this case is the dropdown list. The thing is most intermediate Excel users already know how to do a dropdown list. They just wanna use Copilot because it might do it faster, but obviously it's not quite the case. Instead, it's just giving us the instructions. So it's not that useful here. Other than Copilot, you can use ChatGPT to boost your Excel productivity. For this, HubSpot is providing a completely free resource called ChatGPT plus Excel Workflows. By clicking the link in the description below, you'll get access to this full guide packed with real workflows, tested prompt templates, and instructions on how to use them both for Excel and Google Sheets. Whether you want to clean messy data, generate formulas in plain English, or restructure entire spreadsheets, this guide will walk you through how to do it, all with the help of ChatGPT. Personally, I find the prompt templates in this guide most useful as they help me get a consistent result from ChatGPT so I can spend less time formatting and more time actually analyzing the data. So click on the link in the description below to download this free ChatGPT and Excel workflows guide from HubSpot to boost your Excel productivity. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Continuing in the average section, you can see that I've now asked it for the average salary by office location. It's given us that breakdown as you can see right here. But suppose that we want the data instead of in thousands, as you can see by the x-axis there, I want it to be in actual figures. So it should be 10,000 instead of just a 10 or a 20. For that, I'm just gonna ask it to, can you convert the data into actuals instead of thousands for the salaries. So this is what's generated. I can press on apply, but you'll notice that nothing actually changes in here. If we go up to this chart, which is what I actually want changed, it's not really working. Let me actually specify it. I've narrowed down my prompt to can you convert the chart's x-axis into actuals instead of thousands for salaries and let's see if that works. And you can see that it says I can't help converting it, but now it's actually giving us another script and let's see what it says. Unfortunately, it's just giving us the instructions to do it. It doesn't seem like it's gonna actually do it itself. And this is a general trend that I've noticed where if you ask one question, it can answer it, but as soon as you ask it a follow-up, it starts to get a bit confused. Later in the video, we'll go over how well Copilot works for other tools like PowerPoint, but for now, let's first go over its key weaknesses in Excel. Over here, you might have noticed that with the files we've been working with, they've all been converted into tables. That's because if you don't convert your data into tables, it generally doesn't work that well. It has a hard time detecting it, so it's better if you do that. That's all fine, but there's a bit of a problem if I have something like an income statement where it doesn't really have clear headers. So if I try to convert this into a table by pressing Ctrl T, you'll notice that it creates something like this, which is really not that great. Another one of Copilot's weaknesses has to do with complex tasks that require several steps. Over here, you can see we have the same data set as before. Let's suppose that I wanna create a dashboard. So you'll notice I've typed create a dashboard based on this data. Let's see what it's able to do. So it's been able to interpret the data, but it's not really doing the dashboard. Instead, it's just giving some suggestions on what you could add. Lower down, it adds a few formulas here and there, but they're actually quite basic and easy for me to do anyways. But the main problem is that this just takes a lot of time for you to make anyways, so you're better off just doing it on your own, especially if you're an advanced Excel user. Maybe a solution could be to ask it to use Python specifically. So here you can see I say create a dashboard using Python on this data. I'm just gonna press on start to get going. If we scroll lower down here, you'll notice that it's created something that looks a lot more like a dashboard. The problem is because it's using Python, it's not like an Excel chart where you can easily modify it. So if you're not very familiar with Python, and if you don't wanna have a lot of back and forth here with Copilot, you're probably better off just doing it in Excel on your own. 
At this point, you might be like, Kenji, the reason it's not working well is because of your prompts. You could definitely improve those. And while that is the case, if I do put a similar prompt here into Claude, just saying create a dashboard based on this data, and I upload the file, let's see what it comes up with. While it took longer to load up, you'll notice here that it's created this dynamic type of dashboard with some filters. It's also got the visuals down below. Continuing with Copilot in Excel and some of the key weaknesses, in theory, it works quite well with separate worksheets. So for example, here I've got list one and list two, and I just wanna find out if there's any difference in salary between the two. So I want the sum of list one salary and the sum of list two salary and try to see if there's any differences. Here I've typed calculate the difference in salary for list one worksheet versus list two worksheet. Let's see if it's able to do that okay. So you can see that it's suggesting a formula, but it's not quite what we're looking for. In fact, this other column that it's able to insert is really just the same one. I think it's because it hasn't detected that this is worksheet number one, where we have the list one, and then we've got a separate worksheet with list two. So there I find that it generally struggles quite a bit, unless your prompt is very precise. Obviously, Copilot is not just an Excel tool, so as the bonus, let's see how it does in other Microsoft tools like Word over here. All we need to do is press Alt-I to draft with Copilot. Here, I can ask it to create a resume structure. Let's see how it does. And overall, I found that when it works with text, it actually works very well. It was the case in Excel, so it's very much the case here in Word as well. You can see that it's giving us the full structure of a resume. That's roughly how I would put it myself too. Also, it does quite a good job with follow-up questions. So over here, I can say to make the tone more casual. And you can see we now have an about me section, which is maybe more casual than what we had before. In PowerPoint, I also find it to be a fairly useful tool as it can be quite tedious to move shapes around and things like that. Instead, Copilot is able to automate a lot of it. So you can see I say make a professional presentation on the top big tech firms in the US and the style should be similar to McKinsey. When I do, it's giving me a suggestion of what the slides should look like. Let me just press on generate for it to create the slides completely from scratch. Awesome, so it's been able to generate all of these slides for us in just a few seconds. I can double click on it and browse through everything. I can easily edit each of these slides as well as they're just text boxes. While there are better AI tools in the market, Copilot does have two inherent advantages. The first one has to do with confidentiality or privacy, where a lot of companies do allow the usage of Copilot, but they don't allow for other AI tools. Secondly, it's the fact that Copilot is embedded within Excel, PowerPoint, and all these other applications, which makes it a lot easier to use than having to go to the internet and looking for something in ChatGPT, let's say. To conclude, my honest opinion is that Copilot still has a lot to improve, even though it works quite well for basic text analysis, data cleaning, and even data analysis. If you wanna learn better data visualization tools that use AI, you should watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here to learn Excel from scratch. Hit the like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.